then, um, I don't know, like 13, 14 years ago, I don't think it was the first one, but um, I don't know, it, it's growing up. 15 years, that's awesome. Um, so, I am sitting at the desk across from my boss, and he is the marketing director at the Belgian Brewery, and I am the sustainability person, coordinator, uh, specialist, director, uh, goddess. <laughs> and um, he looks at me and he says, Hillary, you are one of the best salespeople we have. And I had to pause because were I actually on the sales team, that would have been a really great compliment. <laughs> but in the position that I was in, I thought I was being prepped for a career change. So I was feeling a little nervous, and as the emotions started to swell, I looked at him and I said, but Greg, I don't know anything about sales. I'm an environmental educator. And in that moment, I realized what he was saying to me was that my outreach um, efforts and skills were just really, really effective at explaining what we did as a brewery to a really wide group of people. Now the road that got me to that place of sitting across the desk from my boss um, probably started out a lot like a lot of you. You know, a lot of great um, experiences in nature as a kid, camping, hiking, climbing trees. And there was this one experience in particular I had when I was about 10 years old. And I was standing barefoot in a soccer field in suburban Pennsylvania. And the grass was really green and the sky was really blue. And I remember I had this moment of feeling just super connected. Like I was a flea on this giant dog and I could feel the ground breathing beneath me. And um, it was humbling and comforting all the same time, knowing I was a teeny tiny thing, but connected to something really, really big. And then as a senior in high school, everyone knew my chosen career path was gonna be acting and singing, because I had been in every place in elementary school and I was on every singing group and <coughs> blah, blah, blah. And then I had these um, really amazing experiences in, out in nature, both by myself and with um, people that I love and in various communities that made me realize um, I should be going to college to learn something I don't already know. I shouldn't be going for something comfortable. So my freshman year of college, um, I made a really great decision. I was really inspired with geography and oceanography and I was, it, was, it was great. Um, I was so disappointed with the school that I was at, an Ivy League wannabe, and um, I felt distinctly like I was one of five awake people swimming in a sea of students that were sleeping. And um, I needed a change. So over one of the breaks, my mom slid across the table to me a magazine, and I thought it was an outdoor, educa uh, outdoor education adventure magazine, and I look at it, it was actually the program for um, Prescott College, and she said, I think you should check this out. So at the age of 19, I transferred schools, and I show up at Prescott, and I'm like the youngest person there, and um, I'm feeling smug and bitter, because I know that humans are done. We're a cancer on this planet. We are completely disconnected from everything that's happening. Um, we're killing everything and it doesn't matter. We have risen sort of somehow above the system. So really, just to give us hope in our final hours, we should save the whales. <laughs> so, three years later, I graduate from Prescott with a degree in experiential education and environmental studies, and um, a whole new take on life. And I realize, no, humans are not disconnected from it. We are in fact completely completely interconnected to everything in ways that I couldn't have even understood. And that we need to be living our lives in balance with and having respect for everything around us. And that uh, if we do that, then we'll probably save the whales, but more importantly, um, I think we will save the humans. So um, in 1997, I moved to Fort Collins. I naively call CAEE -E at the time. And um, I'm thinking it's like, you know, the local version of this national thing and there's going to be this awesome job for me. And there wasn't, of course, because it was two people. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I did get a, a lifetime of connection and friendship, which has been amazing. And then in 1999, 
um, I realized there was this major disconnect between the work I was doing and the work that I wanted to be doing. So three things happened. Um, I quit my job, well four things happened. I quit my job, <laughs> uh, running before and after school programs with kids, totally thankless. Um, if any of you have experience with that, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I um, did three things. I um, applied for and got accepted into a master's program um, for environment and community with Antioch University in Seattle. Um, I became a certified master naturalist with the city of Fort Collins. And then, um, yeah, what's up? <laughs> and then I... Um, got a job at a place that I thought would be awesome and funky and fun and I could drink beer and that was New Belgium. And it was great, so I worked in the tasting room. Well, all those three things came together and then um, eventually I pitched this position and then I found myself sitting on the opposite side of the desk for my boss, having to explain that I was an environmental educator and not um, a salesperson. And luckily nothing horrible came of that conversation. Uh, in 2006, when I left New Belgium, I started a consulting company, um, and so what I found was that I was being hired to facilitate conversation around sustainability. And the two things that I walked away from New Belgium really understanding, one was that environmental education gave me really great outreach skills, but the two is that sustainability is just a professional's term for environmental education. <laughs> so as I was, became a sustainability consultant, I'm facilitating all these conversations, I'm using the same exact skills that I used when I was teaching fourth graders when I was getting my undergraduate degree at Prescott. I was still viewing this group of people not as empty vessels with which I should fill all of my expertise as a consultant sustainability management systems and environmental impacts and blah de blah it, these people all had their own inherent connections. And my job as a facilitator to consult is to draw those connections out and align them to what's happening organizationally and for them personally and within communities. And I work across all sectors. Um, in November, I took a position as executive director at Shadow Cliff, which is a sustainability education not-for-profit in Grand Lake. And um, when I look to the future of what I would like to see for environmental education, I think Shadow Cliff is actually sort of an embodiment of that. Shadow Cliff does some, one thing super duper well, and that's it brings connection. It connects people to place, and it connects people to each other. And then from there, it provides deeper connection to what people came to Shadow Cliff to learn. So when I think about environmental education in the future for Colorado, what I would like to see, my hope and dream, is that it becomes the connector for all, edu all education programs from like preschools to PhDs. Um, in 2012, um, there was this call for members to people to um, apply for the Colorado Environmental Education Leadership Council. And so I eagerly applied and I got a spot on the council and um, we've been meeting for about two years and it's been an interesting process. Um, but we have spent a lot of time talking about that question, what do we want environmental education to look like in Colorado? And recently I said, you know, a great key indicator would be that we don't need a state level Colorado Environmental Education Leadership Council, um, which is definitely idealistic and also dangerous because if you don't have some sort of steward um, or connection, a face and a name, then you run the risk of becoming so infused you become obsolete. And, and that, that won't work. But what we do need is we need environmental education to be baked into the DNA of our education systems. Because environmental education is just good education. Um, a quick example of that is I am um, on the board for Mountain Stage Community School in Fort Collins. It's um, a handful of Waldorf-inspired charter schools in the state. And we have half our mission is Waldorf-inspired education, and the other half is sustainable living. And um, what we're doing as we grow our culture, we're only two years old, um, we're drawing from private school, from public school, because we're an intersection there between the two. We're a nexus, really. And so what, what is working? What's, what's, doing, what is, um, what's working well in public school? What's working work well in private school? And how can we grow that into our own unique culture? And then we want to share that back. And so that's my vision. My, my hope is that 
environmental education becomes a differentiating factor in Colorado education systems. And that when people come to Colorado, that's what's different about our schools, is that this is just how we do education. And um, we need it for environmental education, but we also need it to save the humans. 